Impossible is nothing. Doing nothing is easy. So do nothing. Every day is a fresh new start to go straight back to bed. You can never fail if you never try. You may not be strong. You may not be good enough. You may never even be a decent person. Oh, you caught me reading my favorite book. That's right, best-selling motivational author here. 2024 is approaching and it's time to get motivated. How's your investment portfolio going? What about your side hustle? You do have a side hustle, right? At least tell me you shave your balls. God. <laughs> I wanted to make this video to help you guys get motivated. Yeah, because every single time I do a Q&A, everyone's like, I need motivation. Help me, I need motivation. I don't know why this has been bestowed on me. I don't know how to say this without sounding like an asshole, but it's just not something I struggle with. I, I struggle with a lot of stuff, okay? No, <laughs> but motivation just isn't one of them. I realize just how weird motivational stuff is online. I don't know if you've seen these type of videos. Why Sigma males are the extremely dangerous. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is underestimating a Sigma male. What are you talking about? Just because they are <laughs> God damn it. Not the typical alpha male does not mean they are not dangerous. Sigma males are the type of guy who is quiet, but deadly. Sigma males are dangerous. <laughs> it's like an infestation. My mind. These are everywhere. I am the greatest. There is no one better than me. And I know it. People watch these? <laughs> Do you want a bite? I'm on a diet, but thank you. You don't need to lose any weight. You're kidding, right? You look great. Very thin. You can always be a little thin. You can always be thinner. <laughs> look better. Well, maybe we shouldn't go out to dinner. I don't want to ruin your willpower. That's all right. I'm not very good at controlling it anyway. Doesn't he cut her off with a chainsaw? Like, what's the motivation? <laughs> Sigma mindset, motivation, self-improvement. <laughs> I wanted to share my thoughts on motivation today to help you guys get motivated so you can turn that beta mindset into a Sigma grind set. I'm so sorry. Chapter one. Yes, this video has chapters. Habits. There is an abundance of videos on this topic already, but the Greeks figured this shit out 2000 years ago, 2000 years ago. They were like, bro, you got to hit the gym. Come on. Stop being lazy. What are you beta? Plato himself actually said adjustable dumbbells are all you really need for a cost efficient, well-rounded workout. Actually, when I was looking into stuff for this video, I realized Aristotle actually said something about the 4 a.m. grind. You know how there's so many videos about 4 a.m. workout or 4 a.m. go up and do sh Apparently, Aristotle said rising before daylight is also to be commended. It is a healthy habit and gives more time for management of the household as well as liberal studies. That 4 a.m. liberal studies grind. <laughs> I wish subtle sigma confirmed. But anyway, the Greeks understood the importance of habit. Not necessarily habits to just exercise or motivate you to do certain things, but your whole character is, is built around habit. Aristotle even claimed that virtue itself came from habit. So this is not innate in us, but something that we need to practice to then gradually make it become part, a stable part of your character. It might seem that for some people it's easy to do certain things, but it's because they develop this over time. And so can you. There's a, actually a misquote by Aristotle that says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Ah, so beautiful. Shame he never said it. <laughs> Greek writing, unfortunately, doesn't sound like it would fit on a gym t-shirt, but it does sort of encompass what Aristotle was saying about habit, although grossly simplified. Since there's such an abundance of literature and videos and whatnot about motivation and and people always ask me, oh, I want to read philosophy. Why should I start? I would highly recommend Epictetus, specifically not this one, the Enchiridion. This one just has it contained and the Enchiridion literally translate to handbook. I didn't know this, but it's meant to keep practicing. It's not that you read a book once and you're wise. It's something philosophy is something they should always sort of keep working on. Keep practicing, make it part of your character through habit. I think there's so much modern take on problems that aren't any different now from what they were back then. We are literally standing on the shoulders of giants. Why not take advantage of it? 
So let's read some passages from it that I picked out. Here we have <clears throat> addressed to someone who has been caught cheating on their wife. No, wait, that's not the one. To someone who became a little too excited in the theater. What the fuck? Ah, here we go. How to fight against impressions. Every habit and faculty is formed or strengthened by the corresponding act. Walking makes you walk better. Running makes you a better runner. If you want to be literate, read. If you want to be a painter, paint. Go a month without reading, occupied with something else, and you'll see what the result is. So if you like doing something, do it regularly. If you don't like doing something, make a habit of doing something different. So whenever you do something, even just once, good or bad, you've automatically made it easier for you to do that again. That's why it's always good to examine yourself and consciously choose which path you want to take. Habit shouldn't be some mindless uh, repeating of action, but rather a deliberate attempt of where you want to take your life. <laughs> I think it's good to ask yourself why you want to develop a habit. I think for a lot of people, it often comes down to maybe an end goal or appearances. You want to reach certain things. But I think if you do it for those sort of reasons, you're just making it easier to quit when it gets hard and easier to quit once you reach that goal. To me, life isn't or shouldn't be an end goal. It's rather fleeting and short. The goal of developing different habits should be for you to develop yourself, your character and who you want to be. And another beauty of not worrying about the end goal is to look at it as Yes, I may not be exactly where I want to be, but at least I am on the right path. And that doesn't matter if you're starting or wherever you are, it, it doesn't matter. So habits can be a great tool, but I also think they can be quite harmful if you're not careful. I think they can instill a sort of false sense of controlling people, especially if you are looking at things for an end goal where if I do these specific things, then I'll reach this goal. Absolutely for sure, I'll be successful. <laughs> because this person told me to do it this way. Life shouldn't just be a string of repeated motions. A lot of the best moments in life come from spontaneity. So always examine yourself and what you're doing and you can't go that wrong, right? <laughs> what wrong can come out of it? Know yourself. That's my little take on habits. I love habits. It makes me feel like I'm living the life I want to. And it makes me feel like it if it hits the fan tomorrow, I still live the way I want to. I get a lot of joy out of it. It's helped me being consistent with things I think are really positive for me in life. Anyway. The master has no possessions except G Fuel. The more he drinks G Fuel, the happier he is. The more he buys G Fuel, the wealthier he is. G Fuel nourishes by not forcing, by not dominating the master leads. PD Pie's lingonberry is the best flavor. Wow, Lao Tzu, thanks for the shout out. All memes aside, huge thanks to G Fuel for sponsoring this video and a great partnership this year. But bigger thanks to you guys because G Fuel lingonberry was one of the best selling flavors. I told you. I drink G Fuel before any video, so I don't look all dead inside. Whenever I have a task that requires a lot of energy, I just know I have a G Fuel at least to help me power through. And especially as a newborn baby parent, I need the G Fuel. So when you need that extra kick, it's clean energy that keeps you going. But the flavor is, is really what you stay for. So check it out, stock up with link in the description and uh, thank you G Fuel for sponsoring this video. Chapter two, action. What prompts action? Why do anything? Why you click on video? I don't know. According to Buddhism, will comes from wanting pleasure. You want pleasure right from me? And by not having it, we suffer. Ugh. Most beings live immersed in the enjoyment of sensual pleasures. Others driven by the need for power, status and esteem pass their lives in vain attempts to fill an unquenchable thirst. I think this is important to remind yourself. You will never be satisfied. You just won't. Napoleon kept trying to conquer sh when is it ever enough? How much stuff do you need? Ask anyone on the planet almost, they'll want something more. I think everyone has this fictional image in their head, like if I had this, then, then I'll be satisfied. No, you won't. No, you f***ing won't. I guarantee it. <laughs> Sorry to call you out. While this idea of wanting sensual pleasures, receiving them, suffering in between and then receiving it, not feeling satisfied, feels like a sort of pessimistic view of existence. That doesn't seem very fun to me at least. Buddhism does teach you how to overcome it. But I also believe it has merit, again, to examine your actions and make conscious choices of, of what you want to do. Are you indulging something deliberately or just for the pleasure of it? 
it actually helped me. I've said this many times, so it's getting boring, but it really did help me examine my actions with with drinking. I real I wouldn't have even even thought about it otherwise. I was really just drinking for the sake of feeling good. I had anxiety at night and I wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> so I'm, too much information. And it helped me realize and just cut it out away from my life entirely. And I'm free from that suffering because I don't have that craving. Craving, according to Buddhism, is suffering. And to be honest, I feel like I'm still always trying to fight bad habits. As much as I love habits, bad habits are equally easy for me to pick up. Doom scrolling on the phone is such a typical example, especially watching short videos like TikToks and, and YouTube shorts, because to me, it doesn't feel like a conscious choice. It feels rather that I'm mindlessly doing it for, for the sake of being entertained at the moment. Don't misunderstand me as well. Even with Buddhism, pleasures are fine as long as it's deliberate and not attached. But it doesn't feel very deliberate when I'm just like... <laughs> Was that on Reddit? I hate it. I hate that habit of mine. Going back to the Greeks actually for a moment, there's another passage of Epictetus. What aid can we find to combat habit? The opposed habit. Against sophistry, one should have the practice and exercise of rational argument. Against specuous impressions, one should have clear preconceptions polished and ready to hand. I don't like this translation because I don't understand the words. I did a video recently where I started picking up drawing and the reason I wanted to do that was because instead of just spending 10 minutes on social media and if I have that time, which I, as a new dad, I don't have much time and, and instead of having that 10 minute that I get for free spending on social media, I thought why not just do something more deliberate that I actually makes me feel good and that's why I picked up drawing. So to counter a bad habit, do a good habit. Chapter 3, our goals. What should we strive for? I don't know. What's the point of anything? Fuck, I didn't think of that. <laughs> I think when people strive for certain goals, there is usually an idea of success and recognition in mind, which isn't unreasonable, by the way, but it's usually pitched in this abundance, especially in those TikTok videos that I showed before, like having a giant mansion or five yachts. I remember I found it so frustrating when I was starting off on YouTube because when media wanted to interview me, I told my entire story and I thought it was great. <laughs> At least from my perspective, it, it was crazy, right? I had uh, gone from quitting university, working at a hot dog stand, barely making any money, to all of a sudden reaching millions of people. That, to me, was just such an unbelievable leap. Yeah, it was incomprehensible. I thought it was insane. But then the article comes out and it's just like, PewDiePie makes money. <laughs> it's like a sake <laughs> is that all anyone cares about i get it it's a new con it was a new concept at that time as well but uh it's always what's at the forefront that's the sort of how we measure success i suppose which hey money isn't all bad okay no i don't want to be all preachy beachy but i it's a terrible metric for success whenever i see those sigma male memes or whatever i really hope people are being ironic uh <laughs> but there was actually a philosopher that brought up an idealized version of man. That's right, Friedrich Nietzsche. He did a couple more things than just growing a cool mustache. Who would have thought? He came up with the idealized human, the Ubermensch. Reading from the Zarathustra, man is a rope fastened between animal and Superman or Ubermensch, a rope over an abyss, a dangerous going across, a dangerous wayfaring, a dangerous looking back, a dangerous shuddering and staying still. What is great in man is that he is a bridge and not a goal. What can be loved in man is that he is a going across and a down going. This idea of the Ubermensch or Superman was the idea of what a human can be, although not easily achievable. He put a lot of emphasis on the individual. We all have different circumstances. We all have different experiences and choices, but we all have the capability of overcoming ourselves. No pain, no gain. That does fit on a gym t-shirt. <laughs> We shouldn't be content living a comfortable life. We should climb and reach for the mountaintops. To overcome our limitations, it's a difficult climb, but that's up there is where the true beauty lies. A lot of Nietzsche's writing is very poetic, but often people tell me that, or even look at what I have as some idealized version of, oh, he, he can just retire and live off his money and uh, be comfortable. And that's great. I'm not trying to undervalue that I have that. But it's through the struggle that we have the capacity to overcome ourselves. 
struggle isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I think personally to see life through that lens of Nietzsche is so much more appealing than previously mentioned like Buddhism. Because we're all gonna have tough circumstances instead of looking at, oh, woe is me, this is so difficult. Rather saying yes, embracing challenges, say yes to life. Life can be whatever you want. It's the ultimate video game. <laughs> Create your own values. So yeah, that is the essence of becoming an Ubermensch, although very oversimplified. <laughs> you know, we're all on a journey. So let's keep dreaming. Let's keep realizing our potential. Keep questioning yourself. Keep striving. Keep growing. And who knows? Maybe you're closer to an Ubermensch than you thought. Was that motivational? I sure hope so. I want you guys to do well. I genuinely do. <laughs> I hope that helped. See you guys in the next video. Bye. Everyone just clicks away for the ad portion. Bjorn, distract them with your cuteness. It's working. We all click, click, clang on the internet. Sometimes you click too much. Boom, you got hacked. Bing bong, you should have used NordVPN. More than VPN. Everyone knows NordVPN, greatest VPN. If you have any other VPN, then you're a dummy dunk. Maybe there's an ad that pops up and you click on, which then gives you a malware. NordVPN protects you from this. It's got malware protection, ransomware protection, DDoS protection, protect you from phishing attacks, man in the middle attacks. Okay, good. I need help. <laughs> okay, mommy's back. Now I can scream! Protect you from scream attacks? No, wait. Why live with the constant fear and stress that something might happen to you that compromise your security online. Just download NordVPN, couple bucks a month, you're good to go, baby. And it's a VPN. <laughs> Obviously, I've been using NordVPN for years now, and I can say it's fast, it's smooth, it connects in just a couple seconds, and it's always running. You wouldn't even notice it. Keep it on your phone, of course, as well. Whenever you connect to public Wi Fi's out in the public or anything like that, it works amazing. It's just a nice way to keep a peace of mind. And also, it's a VPN. So you can watch things from anywhere around the world. You knew that, but you would know that double if you download it and click on the link in the description right now. With my deal, you get the best deal of NordVPN that is out. Every purchase of a two year plan will get you a huge discount plus four months for free. And if you're one of those, ah, I keep hearing about every different day. It's risk free. Try it for 30 days money back guarantee what do you got to lose check out the link in the description i highly recommend it if you haven't already unlock the full potential of the internet safely and security when you read nordvpn.com pewdiepie